Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't like podium, po podiums. I don't like podiums because they're very restricting. So I'm just gonna speak very loudly if you guys can hear me. So I'm gonna talk to you a bit today about how not to lose friends and alienate people, generating physical and language awareness in the workplace. My name is Elizabeth Farrow, and it is Farrow, not to be confused with Ferrari or Ferrero Rocher. It is Farrow. I am a software engineer at Time Inc. And that's my Twitter handle. Go on your phone and retweet me now. Um, I'm going to talk today about a culture of reinforcement. And so culture is this really big, gigantic term. And I'm going to talk today about the very basic and barest of interactions, which is just the interaction that you have with someone else. And so what's your name? Haley. Hi, Haley. Haley and I work at the same company. Haley and I always see each other at the water cooler. I, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I didn't break this down for you. So when I'm talking about the basic and barest of interactions, it means that a positive reinforcement is a consequence that increases the probability of the behavior it follows. And so what that means is that if I interact with Haley and it is good and it is good mojo, then we're going to keep interacting and good things will happen from that. So Haley and I always meet by the water cooler. <laughs> Haley is giving me a thumbs up. Haley is a cool person. I like Haley. I keep seeing Haley pretty infrequently, but she's a cool person. And then 20 years later, I see Haley from across the parking lot. And I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, I know you. And there's this feeling right there of, I'm not sure where we met or what Haley's job description was at that time, or maybe even the company that we worked at, or God almighty, I may not even remember Haley's name. But you know what I do know? I remember Haley, and I remember, most importantly, how you made me feel. And that's the only thing that we remember after a copious amount of years, is we mem remember how they make you feel. We remember that they were really nice to us, that they made us feel special. And up to an extent, I find that hilarious. That's hilarious that the, the work ethic that you have or that your resume or that any of the things that you put into making yourself who you are, that's not what another person is going to remember you for. They're just going to remember that you were really nice to them, that you built off their ideas, that you were a really cool person to hang out with. And there's obviously no training or classes for this. I, again, another hilarious moment that the thing that, the thing that people will remember you most with is you can't, you can't affect that. You just have to put your best foot forward. And so when we're talking about putting our best foot forward, we're going to talk about physical awareness of who we are and how people are, are, uh, are understanding who we are, as well as speech awareness. And so what I'm gonna have you do if you are willing and able, is to get up. And we are going to do an afternoon stretch. <laughs> okay. So do your normal stretch. I'm sorry, it's a little bit cramped, but you know, reach up to the sky if possible. Move back. Don't hit anyone with elbows. Touch your toes. Okay. Loosen up those joints. Okay, and now you can do a power pose. Does everyone know what a power pose is? No. Power pose. A power pose, there's this awesome study where half the people, where a whole group of people were going for a job interview. And half the people went into the bathroom and stared at the mirror and did this pose for two minutes. And then the other half of the people just went outside the room and you know, took notes or something like that. The people who all got the jobs are the people who did the power poses, which tells you what? It's not about your resume, it's not about your work ethic or your job description or any of that. It's about how you feel at that time and how you make the interviewer feel. Okay, so. Um, power pose, there we go. Standard standing positions are what? How do you stand? Stand normally, normally you stand like this. <laughs> But if possible, try to put your hands at your side, try to put your shoulders back. I love my mother to death, but she always does this. 
and it's very, it's very internal. Like you don't want to, it's like you're closing yourself off, right? Okay, you guys can all sit down, by the way. Thanks. Um, public transport is another favorite of mine. Uh, I ride the bus every day, and so it's so annoying when someone is taking up like that 10 to 20 extra percent of space, like they're sitting on your half of your chair. And you're just kind of like, is that enough for me to tell you something? And it's just, I don't want to be confrontational, it's early in the morning, but just say something politely. They are probably not aware that they are taking up your space. So say something very non-confrontational and be like, hey, uh, can you just move your leg over? Is that okay? Thanks. Okay, and so as I was saying, interpretation. What does this mean? The interpretation that I have of Haley right now, Haley, do you want to just stand up? This is what Haley looks like. Haley has purple hair. Haley is wearing this awesome outfit. And I don't know anything about you, but I know that you look like a cool person and you look like I would love to dye my hair purple too. <laughs> and that is what I know about you. I'm, I'm basing purely off physical. You can sit down. Um, purely off physical. I'm not sure if you had a huge amount of traffic getting here this morning. I'm not sure if you missed a morning meeting. I'm not sure about any of that, but I know what you look like and if you have a perpetual scowl on your face in the morning or if you're always, if you're always hanging out with other people instead of doing your work, that's what I will notice as someone who is observing your behavior. Okay. And what we're going to do now is a language awareness exercise. And for that, we're going to break into groups of three. Two people are going to be the participants, and one person is going to be the data taker, who is going to be, hopefully, the best handwriting. Um, so just to work this out, if you guys want a, one person in front and then two people behind, or two people in front and then one person behind, we'll, we'll kind of work this out. OK, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. OK, thanks, everyone. So I hope you know who your group members are. Um, and. The participants, the two participants, you guys are going to be planning a mid-year Christmas party. And it is going to obviously be an awesome party. And every idea from either person, I want you to say a phrase, and then I want you to say a reason why you're either doing the phrase, why you're doing the thing, OK? And so Haley, if I didn't use you as an example. And the phrase that we're going to start out with is no. And so, Haley, it would be awesome to do a mid-year Christmas party. What if we had a Christmas cake? No, I, I can't eat. Um, okay, then we will have an ice cream cake. Dairy, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, do the phrase and then give a reason. Make it up. Okay, data taker, I hope you have a notepad up or something. Okay, data taker, you are going to be recording the number of times a phrase is used as well as what idea was expanded on or rejected. Just like write down really quick notes. Is this supposed to be the same phrase every Yeah, so you can just do no and then Christmas cake, this kind of thing. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to give you a phrase. I'm going to give you a phrase. Okay? So we're going to start out with the phrase, no. Okay? You guys are going to have one minute to plan a Christmas party. The, the two participants are. Okay? And if you could write down the data takers, writing down the number of times the phrase is used as well as the reasons that are being rejected or accepted. Okay? I'm going to have the minute start now. Hey guys, we're going to move on to the next phrase. The next phrase is, yes, but. Continue. Hey guys, we're going to move on to the next phrase. And the next phrase, as Haley has said in the beginning, is yes, and. OK, now we are going to break. We're going to break for one minute for the sake of time. And participants, I want you to discuss qualitative differences. How is it using those three different phrases? Data taker, you're going to think of two other phrases, two other transition phrases, and just record your assumption. And just to give you a prompt for that, 
What are some sayings or transitions that are used or inserted into conversations daily? And think about, are they positive or negatively reinforcing? And so I'll give you an example. I always say, tell me more. So what are some other phrases that are used? So just one minute, participants discuss qualitative and data taker think of two more phrases. Go. Okay, guys. Now you guys are going to test out your phrases. Okay, you have one minute to do your test or phrase number one. Go for it. Okay. Okay, now you guys are going to move on to your other phrase. Okay, so can some of you guys shout out what your test or phrases were? Why not? Why not? Come on. Well. Well. <laughs> what? Can you elaborate? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And so something that you should always be thinking about is, are you opening up someone's creative mind or are you shutting them down with specific language? Maybe you're always saying yes, but, and you're not really, you're not recognizing that you're unfortunately shutting down their mind. When you hear yes, but, you probably just heard from someone else. It shuts down your mind. You're, you're like, oh, OK, well, now you're already objecting to my idea. That's so annoying, right? So which phrase built upon the idea, stagnated it, or tore it down? And these are the, the, what I would like to have you recognize by the end of this exercise is these are phrases that are habits, unfortunately. These, these are phrases that you, know, you always say interesting. You always say, tell me more. You always say, yes, but. So, making sure that you're being aware of the phrases that you're saying so that you can open up someone's creative mind and that you can build upon it. So takeaways, be comfortable in your own skin. Hopefully you're not doing this. Just hands at your side if, if anything's possible. And then how are your phrases affecting conversations? Are they shutting them down? Are they building them up? Are you guys having awesome ideas from this? That means that you're doing something Great, your phrases are building upon the idea. And this is the thing with improv is you're always listening to someone, you're always building on the idea. So are you, as a person, are you always building upon someone's idea? Are you always building upon what someone else is telling you? Or are you just shutting it down? Okay, and a quick pitch for the Sally Conference. I am the founder of Women in Code in New York City. Um, and we are doing a conference for 75 women and by the end of the conference, we're gonna have them chart out a five-year timeline. And this is going to solve a couple of problems, including like, including you have this gigantic bucket list of things to do. Now, we are going to give you an accountability measure for how to do it and when to do it. And you're going to think of this yourself. So I'll just leave you with this phrase, which is when you're running and you're looking at your feet, you don't run as far or as fast as if you were looking at the horizon. And the purpose of this conference is awesome, is awesome. And this is definitely the horizon. So thank you very much.